Hi everyone, greetings to the family here at Christian Life Center. Most of you know me as part of the family, Dawn Galladay, and it's a joy today to be able to talk to you from John 12 verses 20 through 33 about Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the message that he had for the people. The one word that strikes me through this is the word now. He talked about now. And the wonderful thing about scripture is that the now when it was said, the now when it was inspired by John to write it, and the now that is now is, it's current, it's relevant. What John has to write about is relevant today. Uh, Christ said to his disciples that uh, he was going to die and they didn't necessarily understand that. So um, I don't think that we totally understand that either. So bear with me. The Greeks were coming into Jerusalem. Passover was um, coming in a couple days and they found two disciples and they asked the disciple if they could go see this Jesus, this same Jesus that had entered triumphantly into the city, riding on a donkey, and yet they were expecting the King, the Messiah to come. That was their expectation, this great deliverer that would take them out of their poverty, not just poverty financially, but poverty of the soul. They were expecting a Messiah, a great king. So these foreigners coming in wanted to meet this king. And uh, the two disciples, I think, let me see, I think it was Philip and Andrew, took them to see Jesus. And I just, you know, I wonder, were they expecting him to be sitting on a throne with all the regalia of a king? And what did they find? They found a humble man just in the same clothes that all the everyday peasants were wearing. And he greeted them. And, you know, I think of um, the rallies that we have witnessed over the last couple of years. And we're going to be great again. And there's a crowd mentality and everybody is cheering. But that's not what Jesus did. He sat there humbly. And what does he talk about? He didn't talk about how he was going to make Israel great again. He didn't talk about how they were going to be victorious. Instead, he talked about wheat seeds. I mean, what is that about? Most of us who live in the Yakima Valley know a little tiny bit, at least, about agriculture. So um, my husband was a farmer, and I know that one tiny little wheat seed is nothing. And yet when it's planted, it goes into the ground and it dies and it germinates and it springs forth multiplying the seed. And that's what Jesus was talking about as an analogy about himself. And yet the disciples heard this just as we have heard it before we've given our lives to Christ. Most of us would have said, yes, Jesus is God's son, not fully understanding. And they didn't understand this fully. So that's exactly what Jesus points to with his guests. He's going to be glorified in his death. Now, how is that? Because isn't death the enemy? And yet he's going to be glorified in it. His victory and our victory is in his death on the cross. I really encourage us during this 40-day season before Easter to really contemplate that. Um, my phrase for 2021 is die to self, which is completely a new idea to me. And to live it out every day is kind of startling. I, I didn't realize I had so many areas that I needed to die to self. 
but I look at Jesus. In Philippians 2, Paul writes about him. Here he is, the king of the universe. He was with God and created the world, and yet he humbled himself to come and live with us as we live and experiencing everything we experience. That's dying to self. And that's what I encourage us to look at this, this Lent season, these 40 days before Easter. Now, now is the time. His time is now. So can we detach ourselves from this life? Can we abandon ourselves to Christ to die to self and follow him? making him our model. I, I am becoming reluctant to use the term Christians, and I'm searching for a term to use, and I think of, oh, it just left my head. Uh, carrying, carriers of his image, image carriers. We reflect him. Do we puff ourselves up or do we humble ourselves? Christ says in this passage that the world is in crisis. Really? Is the world not in crisis now? Not just the United States, not just the Yakima Valley, not just my personal life, but the whole world is in crisis. And why? Because we need Him. And He came for us. Is that not love? That is such extravagant, lavish love. And he did it because his father loved him in that way. He did it because he loved his father in that way. And he abandoned it all. That's what I struggle with. Abandoning my preferences, abandoning my rights, abandoning even what I think I know, abandoning what someone else has told me that tickles my fancy, abandoning it all to seek him, to follow him. And his disciples who had been with him all this time, face to face with the savior of the world, didn't get it. They knew they called him the Messiah. They called him the Son of God, but they didn't realize the impact of that until he showed himself face to face, until he ascended and his spirit came and dwelt in each one of them. So if any of us are in the place where we think he's the Son of God, we need to come face to face with him. We need to come into his presence. As those foreigners asked, I want to go see Jesus. Can we ask ourselves that today? Take me into his presence. I want to see this Jesus, who's the King of Kings. This lamb, the slain lamb, becomes the Lion of Judah through the cross. And he said it was finished. And that's his victory. And that's what we want for ourselves. Not realizing that victory lies in our humbleness. Not realizing that just as Jesus died to himself, we need to die to ourselves. And I have gone completely off script. So bear with me for a minute. I, I would like us to join together um, and ponder Easter. I, I kind of scratch my head when I look at New Orleans and uh, Mardi Gras, and that's their answer to Lent. And I, oh, you know, where does that fit in? So what's our answer to Lent? Are we gonna party hardy? Or are we going to contemplate Easter? 
not about the clothes we're going to wear, not about the music we're going to see, but about our God who hung on the cross after being scourged, who was humiliated, and yet he did it for us that we might have abundant life right now because we are his and he is ours. So let's ponder these things and ask the Holy Spirit, how can my life glorify God? Not through the things that I do, but through the emptying of all that's in me for love of him. Let's do this together. Thank you.